हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज एट्थ वीक एंड वी आर इन फोर्थ लेक्चर ऑफ एट्थ वीक एंड ओवरऑल इट इज़ थर्टी नाइन्थ लेक्चर ऑफ द कोर्स प्रोसेस इक्विपमेंट डिज़ाइन एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल इन दिस लेक्चर सो एज फार एज दिस लेक्चर इज़ कंसर्न इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू कवर द टॉपिक क्रिस्टलाइजेशन ओके सो इन दिस लेक्चर so in this lecture we will define crystallization we will see different form of the crystal and then we will discuss the crystallization process depending upon the solubility curve right and after that in subsequent lect and after that in subsequent lecture we will discuss about the design of crystallizer so let's start this lecture with crystallization so what is basically crystallization crystallization is the process to form the product in a definite shape okay usually we do not consider about usually we do not focus on the shape whatever product we want if that product is of if that product is of given quality or the acceptable quality we consider that but in chemical engineering process some of the products are formed in a definite shape i am not speaking about the size size may vary but shape will be very definite okay so that shape we call as a crystal okay when the product is made in the form of crystal the process by which it is made we call that as crystallization so in this lecture we will consider the crystallization process in detail so let's start that so as i have told you that finished solid products of chemical process industries often come in the form of the crystal okay so basically it is so basically if i am saying a crystal it means it has a definite shape what these shapes are that we will discuss so as far as a crystal is concerned it is a solid body with the lane faces in which the atoms are arranged in an orderly repetitive array such as cubic tetragonal hexagonal etc so you see it has a definite array okay whatever particles are available in the product that takes its these particle take its step in a definite array or we can say in a definite format and so we call that as a crystal okay and that array may be a cubical shape a hexagonal octagonal or you can say a uh, any that kind of shape but or you can say any other shape but that shape is very definite okay so what is basically crystallization the crystallization is the process of formation or production of crystals from a solution we consider that as a crystallization okay so that is basically when feed is available it is in the form of so when feed is available it is in the form of solution but the product is in the form of solid okay so that we consider as crystallization process and if you see in this image we have several general crystal system such as cubic tetragonal orthorhombic monoclinic and similarly we have many others okay so these shapes are very definite okay so if so if i give some example if you say that uh, you are dealing with mica for example okay so what is the shape of mica okay the shape of mica is a plain sheet okay when you break the mica particle it will be in the form of fine sheets okay so in that way we consider that it has a definite shape in the similar line we can in the similar line we can come across with different other examples also right so do so that is basically a particular crystal fine so as far as crystallization process is concerned it is used to obtain metals it is used to obtain material in attractive and uniform crystals of good purity separating a solute from the melt or solution and leaving impurities behind the process by which a substance in solidifying assumes the form and and structure of a crystal or becomes crystallized so you see when we have the solution 
and the product the product mainly consists of the solute which is available in the solution right so when that so when that solute takes a definite shape of a particle it leaves the solvent behind okay and uh, we consider that particle and we consider that solute is crystallized right so we have different examples of the product which are available in the form of crystal and these are when we consider the sodium chloride sodium aluminum sulfates and sugars okay so when you consider the manufacturing of the sodium chloride or we can say the sugar it has a definite shape right so in these industries crystallizer a very important unit and uh, which is usually occur after the evaporation because when we have the evaporation we got the solvent when we have the evaporation we got the solution with high concentration right and that concentration is sufficient to be and that concentration is sufficient to be used in crystallizer so usually in sugar industry we can say sodium chloride industry there we consider crystallizer as a main unit okay and secondly we can consider crystallization as a purification of many organic liquids okay so when we purify the organic liquid how we remove the impurity that is done through crystallization okay because when we have the solution impurity can occupy a particular shape and that can be removed in the form of crystal so when solvent is available we consider that as a pure organic solvent and that can be purified by the crystallization process right further we have different applications of crystallization such as it is used to freeze concentration of a fruit it is used to freeze concentration of the fruit juice desalination of sea water as i have told you that it is used to prepare sodium chloride and uh, further we can also consider whatever and further we can also consider this to remove the impurity and to generate the drinkable water from the sea water okay so it is also the part of the crystallization but mainly it is not used to prepare drinkable water it is basically used to prepare the solid which is which we consider as sodium chloride right it is further used for recovery of valuable materials such as metal salts from the electroplating process so you can consider that crystallization is used in different processes in chemical industries so now we will see that how this crystallization occurs so for that we will consider on the solution where i am having a particular solute right so when the concentration of the liquid solution is increased okay and how we can increase the concentration of the solution either by evaporation of the solvent or by cooling or the combination of these two right so the solution gradually so the solution gradually reaches the saturation level when we further evaporate it or cool it it attains a degree of super saturation so that is very important word when we are considering crystallization the solution should be at super saturation condition okay you may consider that the solution of sugar in water right at a particular temperature when you keep on stirring the sugar is mixed in the solution sugar is mixed in the water very easily and form a solution okay when you keep on increasing the temperature the solubility of sugar in the water will also keep on increasing right so more and more so, so more and more sugar can be put in the water and solution can be obtained okay now when we further decrease the temperature of the solution then what will happen whatever sugar is available it will be available in the form of precipitate because further it will not because it will not be soluble any more because temperature we already have reduced right so in that case you can see small particles of sugar in the solution and that particles are basically the crystals 
okay so how it happens because we reduce the temperature and when we reduce the temperature the saturation condition becomes super saturation condition okay so that is very common example of crystallization process that you can carry out at your houses also okay so let's discuss it further if the concentration of a solution is more than the solubility of the solid at a particular temperature it is called as super saturated solution so as i have told you the so as i have explained this to you with the example of sugar and water so you can consider the super saturated condition in that solution okay so further if i consider the example of sugar solution it can have a high level of super saturation the concentration may even about 80% more than the saturation value but in the solution of sodium chloride the maximum attainable super saturation is too small to be measured okay so so in sugar solution super saturation condition occurs with significant amount of sugar however that is very less when we are considering sodium chloride okay so basically what happens in crystallization is spontaneous formation and growth of tiny crystal spontaneous formation and growth of tiny crystals which we call as nuclei take place in a super saturation solution okay so when we consider the super saturation condition it means that uh, whatever solid it means that whatever solute is available it forms crystal okay but crystal but crystal has a definite size right initially it is not in the form of crystal it is very small particles okay or we consider that at or we consider that as tiny crystal in other word it is called nuclei so initially very small particles are formed and then continuously formation of solid and then continuously formation of solute over the surface of tiny crystal we have definite size crystals but it is basically start on the nuclei right and that occurs at super saturation condition so the suspension or slurry containing the crystals the solution is called magma okay so when we have the solution and so when we have the super saturation solution and when i am having a small crystals in this we consider that as a magma right and when the crystal is removed from the solution whatever liquid remains there okay that we consider as solvent or that is also called as mother liquor okay it doesn't mean that solute will not be there solute will be there but solute concentration in the mother liquor is very less right because most of the solute we can remove in the form of crystals so you see usually it has three component first is crystal second magma when we have the solution along with crystal and third we have the mother liquor when crystal is removed from the solution right so as far as crystallization process is concerned it has different steps so process of production of crystal the first approach the first step is the crystallization itself then we have separation of crystals from the mother liquor then washing of the crystal with fresh solvent to remove the impurities from the crystal and then dry the moist crystals so in this way we have different steps which we should follow to make the product of different shapes that we consider as crystals now let's see few points about super saturation okay so what is super so what is super saturation a solution that is in thermodynamic equilibrium with the solid phase of its solute at a given temperature is called as saturated solution okay when the solution i mean when the solvent and solute is at equilibrium condition at a particular temperature that is very important at a particular temperature we consider that as a saturated solution okay and when the solution considers more solute okay 
when the solution considers more solute than that is available at equilibrium condition we call that as supersaturation condition. So, what is the degree of supersaturation that must be the concentration at present when I am considering it a supersaturation solution and the concentration at the equilibrium condition when it is a saturated solution right. So, degree of saturation. So, degree of supersaturation is basically C minus C star, where C and C star are the solution concentration which is at the sup which is at the supersaturation condition and the equilibrium saturated value that is this value right. So, difference of these two will be the degree of supersaturation and Further, we have supersaturation ratio which represent which can be represented as S and a relative supersaturation psi we can obtain as here I am having capital S which is the supersaturation ratio C minus C star and then we can have relative supersaturation that is psi value. So, that is basically delta C by C star. So, you can consider that C minus C star divided by C star. So, that this is nothing but the S minus 1. So, simple derivation is there. So, in that way you can relate relative supersaturation and supersaturation ratio right. And now, we have very important diagram and this diagram we consider as solid liquid phase equilibrium ok. So, if you focus on this particular graph it is showing naphthalene benzene binary system ok and binary system for what this is basically solid liquid phase equilibria ok. So, when we consider temperatures as well as concentration of the solution, solution means when I am having naphthalene in benzene. So, naphthalene is solid, benzene is solvent, right. So, when I am considering this uh, graph, if you focus on this line that is A to E and then B, ok. This particular graph from A to E and then B, this graph we consider as solid liquid phase equilibria line, right. And uh, above this, we consider unsaturation condition and uh, below this we consider supersaturation condition right. So, this curve basically we call as saturation condition also ok. So, let us see if I am having point P 1 in this fine. So, this point P 1 is at high temperature and when we cool this ok, when we cool this it will reach to P 2 point ok. So, while reducing this we can consider that the solution from un the solution from unsaturation condition can be reached at solution can be reached at saturation condition at point P 2 right. So, this is the case when naphthalene is dissolved in benzene. So, here I am having a saturation solution. Now, if we further cool it ok, if we further cool it then what will happen in the same concentration we are reducing the temperature. It means this is the condition where crystal will be formed and this particular region we call as supersaturation condition. So, at this point when we re reduce the temperature further the crystal of naphthalene will form ok. And as far as saturation condition is concerned we can have saturation condition while varying the concentration at different temperature from B to E ok and this is basically concentration of the solution. And in the similar line when I am considering point P 3 let us say ok. So, in this point P 3 when I am reducing the temperature further it will reach to point P 4. So, P 4 is basically the saturation point where it is available at saturation curve ok. When we further reduce its temperature then what will happen here? benzene will be solidify or crystal will be formed of the benzene ok. So, 
here you see we can have the crystal of the naphthalene but here we have crystal of the benzene and and all these will depend on the temperature and concentration so this point this so this curve from a to e it is basically the saturation saturation condition where con where temperature and concentration will vary okay now when i am considering point e point e is basically called as eutectic point okay and when we consider this point e and uh, reduce the temperature further we consider this section when the whole solution is solidify either it is benzene or naphthalene okay so beyond point e whole solution will be solidified however above point e it will depend on the curve where naphthalene will be crystallized or where benzene will be crystallized right so in this way we consider solid liquid phase equilibria and this curve directs us that at what condition we can form the crystal of a particular solute okay so and further we will discuss the solubility curve okay so basically what is solubility when we consider the solubility it is basically the ability of a solute to dissolve in a solvent okay and that we consider as solubility now here we will discuss the solubility curve if you see this here i am having temperature as well as concentration so the solubility of the material is the concentration of solute in steady state saturated solution at any given temperature the solubility of solid generally increases with increasing temperature so i think this is the known factor and further if we focus on the solubility curve here i am having three different condition first is the stable condition where crystal cannot nucleate or growth okay so that is basically the solution is at saturation condition or so solution is at saturation condition or less than that right so next is we are having meta stable state where crystal can grow but cannot nucleate it means crystals are formed randomly nucleation means first tiny crystals will be formed and uh, because over that solute will be deposited so in meta stable state we do not have any nucleation crystal are formed randomly okay and next i am having unstable condition where crystals can nucleate and grow spontaneously okay so so this is basically the solubility curve where you can focus that uh, where you can focus that at a particular temperature how much solute should be involved or should be dissolved in the solvent so that crystals can be formed okay so this is the basic aim of the solubility curve okay next we have some important factors which affect the apparent solubility and these are the supersaturation the very important point simple dissolving a solute in solvent especially if you use agitation heat or ultrasound will usually create a thermodynamically unstable that is supersaturated solution okay so next point we have the purity so generally speaking the purer the solute material is then the lower its solubility will be okay and it will also depend on the measurement method the apparent solubility can be sometimes the apparent solubility can sometimes vary depending on how you measure it so along with this there are number of factors on which the apparent solubility depends and these are polymorphic form so most solutes will have many different polymorphic form and that we consider as the crystal with widely differing solubilities okay and now we have the particle size very small particles can be much more soluble than the larger particles so it will depend on the solute particles and uh, so solubility will depend on the solute particles also okay and then we have the chemical stability reactions can occur between solute solvent or environment so we should not uh, consider that so basically we should avoid the chemical disability 
okay and we should consider that solute solvent should not uh, and we should consider that solute solvent should not react with the environment or react with each other okay so all these factor depends on the apparent solubility and now we will discuss nucleation and crystal growth so as far as nucleation is concerned basically we have two types of nucleation the first is the primary nucleation and then we have the secondary nucleation okay what is primary nucleation primary nucleation are that nucleation where the nuclei is not available okay it means the crystals are formed randomly and secondary nucleation means some nucleates or nuclei are already available and further growth of the crystal occurs on these nuclei or nucleates right so secondary nucleation means when i am already having nuclei inside this and primary means nuclei are not available crystals are formed randomly okay so as far as primary nucleation is concerned it is basically of two type homogeneous and heterogeneous and secondary nucleation can form in the form and secondary nucleation can occur with the contact with shear fracture and attrition okay so these are basically nucleation mechanisms which are considered in crystallization process when the solution is at super saturated condition okay so what is primary nucleide basic difference i have so what is primary nucleation basic definition i have already told you now see it's further so classical theories of primary nucleation are based on sequences of bimolecular collision interaction of super saturated fluid that result in the build up of lattice structured body which may or may not achieve thermodynamic stability so such prime nucleation is known as homogeneous nucleation okay so as far as homogeneous nucleation is concerned so in this nucleation a consideration of the energy involved in solid phase formation and in creation of the surface of an arbitrary physical crystal of the radius r in super saturated solution gives so as far as energy involvement is considered it is basically pi by 4 r square sigma plus 4 pi by 3 r cube delta gv okay so what these parameters are let's see that g is the overall excess free energy associated with the formation of crystalline body right and uh, sigma is interfacial tension between crystal and the solution and further gv is the free energy change per unit volume associated with the phase change so so in this way you can compute the energy involvement when i am considering homogeneous nucleation in the similar line heterogeneous nucleation is the presence of foreign particles or heteronuclei enhances the nucleation rate of a given solution the equations similar to those for homogeneous nucleation have been proposed to express this enhancement further results is simply a def further we can consider the result is simply a displacement of nucleation rate against the super saturation curve okay so you see here i am having this expression where kn is the primary nucleation rate constant and delta c is the order of nucleation process okay so in this way you can consider so in this way you can consider homogeneous nucleation and heterogeneous nucleation so let's focus on secondary nucleation as i have told you it is as i have already told you it is developed based on some nuclei or nucleates right so secondary nucleation can by definition take place only if crystal of a species under consideration are already present so that i have already told you and since this is usually and since this is usually the case in industrial crystallizer secondary nucleation has a profound influence on virtually all industrially virtually all industrial crystallization processes so at industrial level we usually consider secondary nucleation okay because 
in that nuclei are already available. Okay. So, we will discuss the concept of crystallization and design of crystallizer in subsequent lectures also. So, that is all for now. Thank you.